Chairman for the Government Code of Conduct Committee, Raphael Trotman, in handing over the draft Code of Conduct, said the assignment had been a tough one, but the work has been completed thus far. Mr. Trotman explained to the Prime Minister some of what was involved in the compilation of the document. Uh, we went through the world and places such as Tasmania and different parts of uh, the African continent, Europe and the Caribbean were um, looked at for sources of um, precedents that we may use to see how issues were dealt with there and which would be applicable here in Ghana. So, sir, it is, as I said, my pleasure and honor to submit to you today the work of our committee for your consideration and review. And knowing, of course, that this is a very topical matter because we did schedule last week today at 3 o'clock and I, I know that the press uh, have been making some mention about the absence of this document, but um, work has been ongoing and the Prime Minister did task a committee and that committee, sir, is reporting today and handing over this document to you. Thank you, sir. So that's Thank you very report. much. Thank you, sir. The Vice Chairman of the committee also shared her thoughts on the document. Uh, I am of the opinion, and I, I believe I speak for the subcommittee, that uh, this is merely a guide. Uh, it's not written in stone, and maybe over time perceived, what may be perceived as impropriety or conflict of interest might expand or contract, and so we, the document might have to be revisited from time to time, but I believe that we have tried to cover the gambit of what public life and, and ministerial duties entail. The purpose of the Code of Conduct is to assist ministers, members of parliament and public office holders in the discharge of their obligations to their constituents and the public at large. It provides guidance on the values or moral qualities that should govern the conduct of ministers and members in discharging their parliamentary and public duties. It is also meant to reinforce public confidence in the way in which ministers and public office holders perform those duties. But the Code of Conduct is not finished. It still has to be presented to Parliament for approval before it becomes law. The moral conduct decided on will be enforced by the Integrity Commission, which is the enforcement body for public officials. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu explains. Me a question what will happen to this document I have just received, I would suggest that the answer would be that it would be sent to the Chief Parliamentary Council for an advice, a legal advice as to whether or not this, uh, these recommendations or the draft code should now be incorporated as an amendment to the integrity legislation so that we are not dealing with separate pieces of of uh, legal instruments regulating and or monitoring the conduct of persons holding public office, but that we have one consolidated law uh, that should be uh, the guide and should be enforced in so far as infraction of the law is concerned or any um, uh, inadequacy to meet up to the requirement of the legislation. So Public office holders have a duty to uphold the law, including the general law against discrimination and sexual harassment, and to act with propriety on all occasions in accordance with the public trust and confidence placed in them. George, back to you.